I just wanted to throw out just some preliminary comments because we're going to need something durable materials for educational purposes that people can sort through. And I just wanted to throw out a few thoughts and then turn things over. I mean, I think there's at least in the patient component, widespread misunderstanding about what consolidation therapy is. I'm seeing patients who are in their fourth relapse and asking about consolidation and really not clear that this is really considered part of frontline therapy for newly diagnosed multiple myeloma. And I think also, as I go through what's out there, there are pretty different continental differences on how consolidation is applied. I mean, a lot of European data um, on the use of consolidation therapy, it's getting a little bit uh, skimpier when you look at what's going on in the U.S., uh, also, I would welcome comments regarding timing and duration of consolidation, if there are specific subgroups and with its use, and then some discussion with regard to some of the clinical trial. I mean, IFM 2009 ostensibly had a consolidation uh, after transplant, uh, that has to be discussed, and ASCENT has a consolidation phase, and uh, CESAR has a consolidation phase. Uh, and I think that I'll stop and open it up for discussion, but also I do think we do need kind of a formatted text about what it is, when it's given, some of the information we have in trials uh, and some of the differences, uh, because I mean, a lot of the published comes out of Michele Cavo's group uh, and yes, the U.S. trial did have that when they did the comparison of transplant tandem, transplant maintenance, transplant consolidation. Uh, these are big differences. So with that, I think I'd like to turn it over to my colleagues. First, I think that we have to start by the definition of consolidation, because in principle, I think that consolidation means that the administration of uh, some uh, number of cycles in majority of the clinical trials it is established too to turn my point of view if we plan consolidation as uh, something and given after the total resistance transplantation from my point of view with the objective of uh, upgrading the quality of the response so i think that the starting point is uh, what is uh, the response achieved after the total resistance transplantation the next question can i upgrade it if the answer is yes, okay, let's go to consolidation. And why a fixed number of cycles? If you wanted to upgrade the quality of the response, the ideal situation would be to prolong the, the treatment until you reach what you consider the optimal response before moving to maintenance. But, uh, well, this is my, my opinion. And indeed, in my clinic, I don't go to consolidation if the patients are in complete response and MRD negative after autologous stem cell transplantation. Yeah, I agree with Marvi. I, I, I'd want to ask just, um, do we want to say consolidation means X number of cycles after transplant, or are you saying even transplant could be considered a consolidation, which some people do? Um, and, and so if we say that it's only the X number of cycles after transplant, then this discussion is only a transplant focused discussion. So I just want to ask you, Maury, what, what you were thinking about that. I actually don't want to start with uh, transplant, no transplant. Uh, if you're MRD after induction, what you should do, I think it's probably beyond the scope of what we want to capsulize here. So I guess what I was visualizing was treatment given after transplant before maintenance. And I okay. think that, so it's an important opinion to say when a, a, a thought leader says, I don't use consolidation outside of a trial if the patient is MRD negative post-transplant. And that's a pretty important point. Not sure everyone agrees, but it's an important point. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and the, the second important point is, uh, well, consolidation usually includes uh, combinations identical to that we gave during the induction. Is this appropriate? Because maybe it would be good to expose the plasma cell to something different. Now we have a different mechanism of action and definitely this would be very attractive in order 
to put more patients in MRD negative or incomplete response or just to upgrade the quality of the response. And in the clinical practice, I think that this is more easy because you can evaluate the kinetic of the response during induction after transplant and you can decide. But to generalize this in the clinical practice for a general audience, I think that it's more complicated, but it deserves to be discussed. Yes, no, I agree, Mary V. I think consolidation in conceptually um, is complex, not least about how does tolerability factor into this in the post-transplant recovery period, particularly as we're moving into now highly effective platforms of maintenance with the established rec uh, a platform now of lenalidomide maintenance until progression, clearly showing substantial clinical benefit. And I think at the same time, the ability to add to that, be it with an antibody and otherwise. So, so to me, certainly in my practice, what uh, I, I consider very carefully before embarking on a consolidation strategy is tolerability questions. Um, and I agree with you that the attractiveness of bringing in different drugs is fascinating, but clearly something that I think should be the subject of research. Would, would you agree, Mary V? Because right now, the data we have, certainly for certainly using lenalidomide and bortezomib consolidation is there. Um, it's practical, it's, 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 there's, it's feasible, the tolerability is there, although one has to be careful about the neurotoxicity after high-dose alkylation. Um, but the question of benefit is still such a challenging one, isn't it? Because in the stamina trial, right, Nina, we, 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 we really, what do we have from stamina most recently in US practice to guide us? Um, because there was a hint for high risk, wasn't there, for both the bortezomib-based consolidation and potentially the tandem. For tandem. Shaji, right? Um, the the most if you look at the as treated population, so the people who actually went on to their assigned treatment, because a lot of people dropped out, um, it's the as treated people that the high risk may have done better um, for tandem transplant. Um, but yeah, consolidation is hard, and I, I also think one of the things that's really hard about adopting what you see in the clinical trial for the real world. So let's take Forte or Griffin for example. You've got four cycles transplant and then consolidation in both of those trials. Griffin is two cycles of consolidation. Forte is four cycles. What happens in the real world? We don't even see the patient till cycle three or four a lot of times, right? There, so so then you're just hanging on to more cycles because they're not going to get to transplant till six cycles. So then do you do six and two for Forte or do you do you know six and zero for Griffin style, like I, I still think sometimes the logistics make it difficult to do the exact thing that the trial did, uh, but that's not the same question as Marie V was saying of trying to deepen the response based on what you see at the three month mark. So those those questions always uh, bother me because I don't know whether I'm supposed to do it like the clinical trial or to do it on the biology basis of the clinical trial, which is to deepen the response. All right. So if we're talking about definition of consolidation therapy, there's nothing in the definition that would preclude the introduction of new agents that uh, the patient hasn't seen before. But the clinical trials as they have been designed to date actually haven't done that. I mean, they've basically done. So the definition and the data are going to not exactly sync up right? because consolidation historically uh, has used basically the induction agents again. Yes, because people don't want to use up the next thing. I mean, right, we all get parsimonious about um, what we want to do for these patients now. But Mari V brings a huge point, like, why not do something different, you know, and are you willing to do it at, at the point where they're doing it looking great? Um, so some of the trials will look at that. The SWOG trial may look at that and the ARIGA trial, which won't have had as many people getting daratumumab and induction. Um, in fact, not in ARIGA, but uh, they will add some patients to get daratumumab and maintenance. I guess you could call it consolidation. Um, that, that might look at that. Well, in fact, also in EMN02, the consolidation was different uh, as respect to the induction because it was VCD for induction and VRD consolidation. So in some trials, you do have this However, in clinical practice, at least in Europe, it's impossible because as it is not recommended by the guidelines, uh, you cannot have access to a different uh, triplet for consolidation. So what we are doing in Italy, but I guess also in many other countries, like Nina was saying, either six or four plus two, uh, which is considered a whole. So you can't do something and then without progression, something else after transplant. So in routine practice to test what Marie V is saying, which is, makes sense, uh, it's impossible in many countries. Well, it's almost impossible, Elena. I agree with you, but you can do some 
modifications and uh, sometimes I try to switch from bortezomib to carfilzomib because of a peripheral neuropathy or uh, yeah some uh, some small modifications can be made based on potential toxicity but yeah well yeah you can do if you wish but i don't think you you can get some large clinical experience from this i mean uh, yeah, well if i do this in italy i have to say that the patient is progressed so uh, no of is... course of course the, and and this is the reason why we are discussing because if we go to the clinical trials majority of yeah. them are using the same like as uh, an induction induction and uh, well i think that this is uh, what we could potentially discuss and we could potentially change in the upcoming clinical trials uh, to generate more information, especially now that we have many novel agents. And uh, well, I think that the, the upcoming clinical trials are doing this type of modifications. And you alluded to the European Myeloma Network 02 and all the clinical trial with the cyber D, but now we have a by specifics that are going to be utilized as consolidation in order to, to change the treatment and to upgrade the quality of the response. Well, I, I think also, you know, as we think about where the biospecifics get positioned post transplant, it's got to be adopted with a, a great deal of care, right? Hasn't it, Mary V? First, because, um, you know, I think the biospecifics are phenomenal in terms of some of the early data, but this vascular signal, especially in the post transplant setting, has to be carefully explored, in my humble opinion, just because I, I do think it's an important challenge. The flip of that is that in the in the Griffin trial, which Mary, v, uh, sorry, I apologize, Nina mentioned earlier, um, we were very pleased with the performance of consolidation in both arms, but it was very clear that the DARA RVD consolidation for two cycles, not only was it well tolerated, but importantly, we definitely saw an improvement in MRD across that signal. Uh, you may remember Jonathan Kaufman presented that for us uh, a couple of years back, and then uh, Jacob Laubach uh, updated in December with that big impact on maintenance as well.